Gradient descent is an optimization algorithm mainly used to find the minimum of the function. In machine learning, gradient descent is used to update the parameter of a model, but parameters can vary according to the type of algorithm, such as coefficient in linear regression and weights in neural network. In today's video, we are going to talk about what is gradient descent, what are the type of gradient descent, and how does it work. So, without any further delay, let us get started. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Before we start, I would highly recommend for you to watch my previous videos about the artificial neural network. Alright, so let us get started. What is gradient descent? A gradient descent is an algorithm that is widely used in machine learning in order to find the minimum value of the cost function. The algorithm works in a repetitive way by computing the gradient or slope of the cost function at the current point and then make a move or a step in the opposite direction of the slope in order to find uh, the minimum value of the cost function. So, in order to understand uh, how does the gradient descent work exactly, let us start with an example and then we will explain how does it work exactly and what are the types of gradient descent. In this example, uh, we have a very simple version of the neural network and we can see this whole process in action where we got some input values, then we got the weight, and then the activation function is applied, then we got the output, which is y hat, and we compared it to y, which is the actual value, then we calculate the cost function. For a neural network to work, we need to have back propagation, and that is the one, the error, which is the sum of the square difference between the output value y hat and the actual value y, is propagated back to the network and the weights got uh, adjusted accordingly. Now the question is how to minimize the cost function. One approach is the brute force approach where we take a lot uh, of possible values uh, of the weights and we try them and see which one is the best. What we can do for instance is we plot let's say 1000 weight and it will look like the following. On this chart, on the y-axis, we have the cost function and on the x-axis, we have the y-hat, which is the output. And this is what the cost function will look like. And basically, you will find the best value as shown. So, it is very simple approach. If you have one way to optimize, it might work. But as you increase the number of weights, you increase the number of synapses in your network then you have to face a curse of dimensionality. So what is the curse of dimensionality? Let us have an example. This neural network was used before for property evaluation example. Please check the video about how the neural network work for more information. So this is what the neural network looks like when it was trained already. Well, when it is not trained, then the actual neural network will look like something like this. We have these possible synapses and uh, we still have to train the weight and here we have a total of 25 weights so let us uh, see how we could possibly brute force 25 weights remember it is a very simple neural network right here so by doing some simple calculation as follows we will have 10 to the power of 75 combination this is a very large number of combination and even if we use the latest fastest computer, it will take years to complete this brute force. So this is not going to work for our optimization. This was in case our neural network was simple. But if the neural network looks like something like this, then it will not happen at all ever. So the second approach that we are going to use is the gradient descent. We are going to use it to find the optimal value of the weight faster. Let us see how. 
this is the plot uh, we used before so uh, let us say we start somewhere and from that point on the top left we are going to look at the angle of our cost function at that point we are going to find out what is the slope at that specific point and find out if the slope is positive or negative if the slope is negative like in this case it means that uh, we are going down to the right is down and to the left is up and from there it means you need to go to the right basically you need to go down and that's uh, what we are going to do in order to be more clear imagine you are hiking on a mountain and you want to get to the bottom of the valley you can see the direction of the steepest uh, descent by looking at the slope of the mountain. If, if you take small step in that direction, you will eventually reach the bottom of the valley. Again, uh, same thing here at the second point. We calculate the slope and this time the slope is positive, meaning the right is up and the left is down. So we need to go to the left. And again, we calculate the slope at the third point and you roll the pole to the right. You keep calculating the slope and move in the direction opposite to, to it until you find the lowest possible value of the cost function. There you go. That's how you find the uh, best possible value for the weights and in simple terms, the best situation to minimize the cost function. For sure, it's not going to be like a ball rolling, it's going to be like zigzag. So, instead of browsing uh, through million and billions of values uh, of weight, uh, we look at where or in which way it is sloping. Like the example I give before, imagine yourself, you are standing at the top of the hill and uh, just feel which way it's going down. Gradient descent is very efficient method in solving our optimization problem, where we are trying to minimize the cost function. It takes us from year to within minutes or hours, and it helps uh, speed things up, because we are looking at which way is down, and going to that direction, and take step and find the minimum faster. The issue with the gradient descent is that it requires the cost function to be convex which means that it, uh, it has one global minimum. But what if the cost function is not convex? What if it looks like something like this? First of all, how could that happen? If we choose a cost function that is not the square difference between the output value and the actual value, and then in a multidimensional space, it can actually turn into something that is not convex. So what will happen in this way if we are going to try our normal gradient descent method? It will look like this. We could find a local minimum of cost function rather than the global one. And as we can see, we were able to find the best minimum. Therefore, we don't have the correct weights and we don't have an optimized neural network. So what do we do in this case? Well, the answer is statistic gradient descent, and it turns out it doesn't require the cost function to be convex. The gradient descent is when we take all the rows and then we plug it into our neural network, we find the output value, and then we calculate our cost function according to the cost function formula, and then we adjust the weight. On the other hand, in using statistic gradient descent, we take all the rows and then we plug it one by one into our neural network. So we take the first row, we plug it into our network, we find the output, then we calculate the cost function, and then we adjust the weight. Then we take the second row, we plug it into our neural network, we find the output, and then we calculate the cost function, and then we adjust the weight, and so on. So we are adjusting the weight after every single row. Instead of taking all the rows at once, plug it into our neural network and adjust the weight once.
The main two differences are that the stochastic gradient descents help avoid the problem of finding local minimum, rather than finding the global minimum value of the cost function. And the reason for that, the stochastic gradient descent has much higher fluctuation because it can afford some. It is doing one row or one iteration at a time, and therefore it has higher fluctuation, and it is much more likely to find the global minimum value. The second reason, the statistic gradient descent is much faster because it doesn't have to load all the data in the memory at once and wait till they run all together. It can run rows by rows, uh, which means it is much lighter algorithm and much faster in that sense. The advantages of using gradient descent is that it is a determination algorithm. Rather than the statistic gradient descent, where we are selecting uh, possibly at random the rows and updating our neural network in a statistic manner. Finally, gradient descent is a very important algorithm that is widely used in machine learning. There is another approach between the two methods that we discussed in this video, which is called the mini patch gradient descent where we combine the two approaches together, which I'm going to discuss in a future video. One more thing to keep in mind is that it is very important to choose the right algorithm based on the dataset and the computational resources available. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.